Peggy 12. Skyward Wing playing as Ribbon Girl. Meanwhile, Zerk playing as Twintel. Those are the two characters that will take place in the grand finals. Let's take a closer look at those characters with a profile first on Ribbon Girl. And we've talked about before, her ability to jump and leap over everything is so impressive as well too, using those four jumps. But as we saw with Skyward Wing D1, not necessarily spamming that and making sure to keep his opponent off guard and take us through some of the arms that come with Ribbon Girl as far as what she could possibly do. And let's start with that first arm of the Sparky. Yeah, the Sparky, it's a medium weight arm and it also has the electric attribute. Well, this electric attribute will shock the opponent, leaving both of their arms incapacitated. And because of that, um, you'll get a free grab or a free rush follow-up. And as far as the popper is concerned, it is a wind attack which blows the opponents away, giving you an opportunity to follow up with another juggle. It is a light, multi-shot kind of arm. So because of that, it can lose to mediums and heavies. And last but not least, the Slap Amanda, which is fire. And that knocks down the opponents if charged. And it's a medium weight. We saw Skyward Wing go with those double Slap Amanders. Meanwhile, Ribbon Girl, Skyward Wing, the only thing standing in their way of this championship is going to, of course, be Zerk with Twintel. And as we take a closer look at Twintel and what she'll bring to the game, Vicky, you look at Twintel's ability to really slow down those punches as they come. And we saw Zerk use it a couple times as well, too, but what have you liked about people that have played with Twintel and what she can bring to a match? Well, in particular, regarding Zerk and seeing how he played Twintel, I really like the fact that he would hold uh, glide up in the air. He could attack from that glide as well as avoid punches that are coming at him so he could slow them down and kind of shimshade his way away from that punch and attack on his own. Um, as D1 mentioned, he was able to control his arms, hold them at the ready, so that way whenever a punch was coming at him, he was able to shield it and get away with it. As we get set for the grand finals between Twintel, Ribbon Girl, Ribbon Girl represented by Skyward Wing, Twintel represented by Zerk, Let's take this to a different stage here, D1. Why don't we do that? And so you look at the Sky Arena that these two will be facing off in, in the Grand Finals. What can you say about that particular stage and what do we expect? I feel like this is a pretty balanced stage. So at this point, it's all about the best person on this, at that day, on that day, winning. Let's get set for the Grand Finals of the 2017 Arms Open Invitational. Please welcome your two finalists, Skyward Wing taking on Zerk and a best three out of five right now. Zerk going with Twintel, Skyward Wing riding all the way with Ribbon Girl. This is gonna be very interesting, Vicky, because we've seen Ribbon Girl really use those double slap amanders to guide Skyward Wing to victory. Meanwhile, Zerk, it was all about that change to the parasol comboed with the Chilla that allowed Zerk to really get the upper hand in the semifinals. And it's really interesting to see how well Ribbon Girl's been doing between the test punch and uh, the tournament that we're having at the very moment. Um, she is one of the three main beginner uh, characters that you could play in the game of arms. D1. And I, I just really want to see Byron Bart come up on stage, man. Do you guys want to see Byron Bart? <laughs> see, the people like Obviously, very exciting stuff going on in this Grand Finals. As we mentioned, it's three out of five. You have to win three games. We're not going to let you get away by just winning two. You've got to be a little bit more consistent. Sky Arena, all these matches in the Grand Finals taking place. Ribbon Girl, though, looking like going with the Sparky and Slap Amanda Twintel. Double chillers. Let's get this one started right now. Both opponents getting a feel for each other. First throws. Oh, that throw negated with a charge. Double chiller right there, followed by a throw. But, but notice how Skyward Wing understands that if you're frozen, that's not a free grab. So he kept going for those punches to stop the attempt. Keeping Ribbon Girl off balance. Meanwhile, Twintel trying to get another grab, and that's a critical one. Long distance grab right there that's going to turn the tide early in this one, Vicky. Yeah, absolutely, and we're seeing Twintel, I was about to say, Twintel hasn't even got one damage on her, but manages to bring it back. Ribbon Girl needs to find her footing back onto the stage. She could still do this. The rush attack is coming up very soon. Three grabs so far for Twintel. What we're seeing, D1, is Ribbon Girl's getting knocked down to the lower level and having to waste one of those multiple jumps just to get back up. I mean, can we talk about the fact that Twintel has, like, almost perfect health? Like... And Twintel, flawless. Hair is still looking on fleek. Meanwhile, Ribbon Girl under 30% health at this point. Two rush attacks ready to go at this point. Ribbon Girl, oh, gonna miss with the right slap of Andrew. Meanwhile, Twintel gonna get the grab and toss off at this point and Vicky how impressive. And that's the patience that we were talking about that Zerk had to progress to where he is right now in the bracket.
Both players still have that rush attack ready to go. Zerg taking the opening round in his first game of the best three of five grand finals. And yet another throw in D1. What can Ribbon Girl do to try to avoid these throws and stop getting thrown around this sky arena? I mean, Ribbon Girl having two air dashes and four jumps, there's a, there are a lot of options at her disposal. But the thing is, Zerg is just really hard to hit. Vicky, we talked about those core mechanics in all fighting games that allow you to be successful. Zerg certainly showing that the ability to block all the rush attacks he's faced. He's continuously blocking all the rush attacks, but at the same time, using to his advantage wherever his opponent are, especially in the air, Ribbon Girl does like those mid-air jumps, and he's taking advantage, and that is why he was able to land those rush attacks. Quintel's got Ribbon Girl to less than 50% health. Meanwhile, that throw's gonna be negated by the slap of Mander. Slap of Mander still moving to the left and right there. Right there. Meanwhile, Double Chill is gonna be negated by a couple of hits of that slap of Mander. It seems like in D1, if you get knocked to that outer area on the mesh that's lower, get another block by Zerg and that rush attack. Attack. If you get to that lower level, you really seem to be at a disadvantage here, D1. Yeah, it looks like whoever has the high ground definitely has the advantage here, but, I mean, you could just get right back into the fray, as right now we have Zerk, who's actually keeping the high ground, making it difficult for Ribbon Girl to get back on, and Zerk taking the first game. Double chill is for a Stone Cold KO, and that'll be the first game point in this Grand Finals match that'll go to Zerk, and once again, Zerk D1 doing a fine job of just making sure he could control the top stage of that Sky Arena, keeping Ribbon Girl down at the bottom, where Ribbon Girl had to waste a jump to get up every single time. Yep, right now, this man has Florida on his back. Representing Miami is Zerk from the fighting game community, too, so you know there are a lot of people who probably cheering for him all the way back at home. Let's get set for our second game here, and you look at Ribbon Girl, Vicky, and what she could possibly do to get back and establish control of that top area. We're gonna stick in Sky Arena, so these two players, Skyward Wing, Zerk, down to our championship grand final match, are gonna have to make sure they get familiar with this stage. As we did mention, the higher ground is exactly where you wanna be. Ribbon Girl already starting out pretty strong, better than the last game as what we saw. Managing to get that grab off the arena, 150 damage right off the bat right there. Keep an eye on Ribbon Girl, trading out those Slapamanders for double Sparkies here, D1. What's the logic behind that decision? So having the double Sparkies means Ribbon Girl has a higher chance of actually electrocuting the opponent and then getting a free grab opportunity. But it looks like we see a bit of a change up here with Skyward Wing's play. He's a little bit more defensive, trying to watch what Zerk is going for, but still, even after going for that grab attempt, Zerk counters back with the grab himself. Excellent awareness and reaction to get the throw on Ribbon Girl. Meanwhile, Ribbon Girl can miss with another throw Although, here comes the rush attack from Ribbon Girl, and then connects. Bop, 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 bop. Gonna knock Twin Tail back, D1. And the reason that connected, too, was because Zerk actually had an option to block, but he dodged. Oh, Twin Tail gonna negate the throw. However, can't necessarily connect. Ribbon Girl able to avoid the rush attack from Twin Tail. Ribbon Girl got a couple sparky starts at this point. Double Chillas. And the throw attempt by Ribbon Girl gonna be blocked. A one-two punch by Twin Tail at this point. Both fighters under 50%. Yet another grab for Twin Tail right there, Vicky. And that is why we could have seen a possible arm change as well because of the fact that the shock element deactivates the opponent's arms. They won't be getting frozen anymore. Ribbon Girl trying to charge those Sparkies. Meanwhile, Twin Tail dancing and skating around the ring left and right, getting the throw on Ribbon Girl. That's gonna almost do it for this round. Meanwhile, Twin Tail backing up. Just eight seconds left. Ribbon Girl's gonna have to act fast, but no. You see the throw attempt, the shards of green illuminating the screen, being negated by that Sparky thrown to the right. Yep, it's definitely easy to counter. And notice how both players have a lot of meter going into the next match, especially Zerk. Since he has the lead, he could actually sit on that rush when the time is right and close the second game out. Zerk trying to get the throw connects on yet another long throw at this point. Meanwhile, Ribbon Girl sticking with the double spark. He's trying to charge those. Rush attack ready to go for Twintel. Gonna dodge the throw attempt by Ribbon Girl. Connects with the one, two. Ribbon Girl charging those sparkies. Meanwhile, Twintel has a rush attack ready to go. Ribbon Girl, ooh, do you think that was maybe on accident right there, Vicky? Um, possibly Ribbon Girl trying to get uh, Twintel kind of getting up from being knocked down from all those punches, but unfortunately mistiming it. Twintel with the rush attack, ready to go. Meanwhile, Ribbon Girl dancing and trying to get those double sparkies on. Twintel getting knocked down, and once again, D1, Zerk doing a fine job of holding down the fort up top and keeping Ribbon Girl and the gallows below. Yeah, and right now, because of this, we actually see Skyward Wing struggling to figure out which kind of strategy works the best. You see Skyward Wing going for shields. You see Skyward Wing opting to jump in the air or even try to throw out swings. But look at this, Zerk just remains 
Ones with like a decent amount of health. One, two, double chill, a hit right there, and the rush attack is ready to go for Quintel, just keeping Ribbon Girl at bay. 35 seconds left in this one. Ribbon Girl with about 25% health. No, it's down to 15. You wonder if that rush attack is going to be deployed. Enough to maybe get chip damage for the KO. Here comes the rush attack. Double rush attacks, no! Ribbon Girl going to counter at the perfect time. And it's going to keep Ribbon Girl alive. Quintel with about 50% life. Meanwhile, D1, what are we seeing here? So that was actually good risk management by Zerk. If you notice how much health he had, he was actually able to take that risk with the rush attack and still maintain the lead. Now we are counting down to the last six seconds. Five seconds left. Ruben Girl has to do something fast. Meanwhile, Twintel, look at this strategy. Baiting and just staying back outside the arm's length. And that'll be a second round victory, a second game point as well, too. And you mentioned risk management, solid advice, whether it's from your investment banker or what you're doing here in arms. So you look at that, the smart play by Twintel to make sure didn't overexpose yourself. Yes, you know, the Zerk he understood that he had a lead and he might as well just sit on it instead of taking any crazy risks and giving Skyward Wing any opportunity to inflict more damage on him. Impressive victory by Zerk here, Vicky. And we go back to this level again, Sky Arena. This is the stage they're gonna be using and really Zerk and Twintel holding down that higher ground. We saw on that missed rush attack, those punches, they're hard to get up and a change in strategy. Double slap Amanders for Ribbon Girl. What's the thought process there in your opinion? Uh, probably trying to cover all the wide range that we see Zerk go whenever he's hovering. He's always hovering side by side, trying to find that opening. That's why he doesn't release any of his punches, releases them one by one. And before he does so, look at him. Look how he, how he waits for both his arms to come out before he throws out the other. Another grab and throw by Twintel. Don't forget, if Zerk can win both these rounds, he will be victorious in our grand final match for 2017 Arms Open Invitational Champion. Meanwhile, Ribbon Girl staying at the bottom. You look at those double slap commanders, D1. Those are probably the best arm that Ribbon Girl can equip to get up and over that elevated stage. Yeah, definitely could help him out when it comes to stopping Zerk from just dodging all over the place. And right there, interrupting the rush. Great stuff. We actually see a bit of a change up from Skyward Wing. Quintel trying to use the rush attack. Ribbon Girl saying, excuse me for a minute, though. Ribbon Girl with the rush attack of her own, ready to go. However, getting knocked down to the lower area. Still can't get to the top floor where Twintel is just holding down the penthouse. Meanwhile, less than 50% health for Twintel. Ribbon Girl got that rush attack ready to go. Neither fighter really taking advantage at this point. Ribbon Girl, here comes the rush attack, D1. And it looks like Zerk already has a shield at the ready. Always dancing around the center, trying to basically give the opponent a false sense of security, like, hey, come in here, the water's fine, but actually it's not as he immediately will just respond with an arm. But look at the help. It's getting closer, but Twintel does have op the option to use Rush very soon. Eight seconds left, can't back up this time. Zerk with Twintel, gonna have to be a little bit more aggressive. Four seconds left, next punch connected. Here comes the Rush attack, but no! And that's why we saw the decision, D1, to go with the slap Amanders because you could create such a wide arcing punch to really throw off your opponent. That was out of control. So first and foremost, you saw Zerk actually build meter when he went for the charge. That gave him the rush. But then when he opted to go for the rush, it was immediately interrupted. Here we go with Skyward Wing actually taking the first round. And we see a little bit of a change from Zerk going with the Thunderbird and the Chilla. Vicky, you have to think that is to counter those slap Amanders in the distance that they can come. Oh, absolutely. This is the first arms change that we're actually seeing from Zerk in quite some time now. And we're seeing all these rush attacks happen to miss, but not for Zerk. Rush, <laughs> rush attack by Skyward Wing, as we see right there. But you're saying right there for Zerk, the first time that Zerk couldn't block that rush attack. Maybe. Absolutely. And a lot of times we were seeing all these rush attacks being missed or being blocked. And believe it or not, rush attacks punch away any arms coming towards them. So this means that you could actually convert into a rush attack. Ribbon Girl holding down the top shelf for the main part. Twintel has a rush attack ready to go, but Ribbon Girl now keeping Twintel at bay here, D1. Yeah, it looks like Zerk is gonna have the time to starstruck because he's getting hit with numerous arms and finally gets an opportunity to apply some pressure here to Skyward Wing. Twintel with the throw, that slap Amanda trying to come to the side, but the Thunderbird gonna stun and shock Ribbon Girl momentarily and negating two throws attempted by Ribbon Girl. Meanwhile, Twintel has a rush attack ready to go, but still sizable amount of health for Ribbon Girl. Ribbon Girl yet, here comes another rush attack in this same round. This could be a huge game point for Skyward Wing. Rush attack gonna be blocked by Zerk here at this point. Zerk though, getting ready to charge something up. Misses on the throw right there, D1. And if you notice, Zerk actually was low on shield, but right there, Skyward Wing with one on the scoreboard. It ain't over. It ain't over. Skyward Wing taking that game point, and we are now gonna get set for a fourth 
game here, potentially, obviously. So you have the two games that first went to Zerk. Then Skyward Wing, not ready to give up and go home yet. Switching to the slap of Manders, Vicky, and that's proved to make life much more difficult for Zerk. It really shows you how the different combinations of the arms could really help you get the upper advantage on your opponent. As we saw in that last game, his shield was running very low, and if you block way too much, your arms will actually get damaged, and they will break. Zerk still adjusting to the double slap of Manders, gonna go with the parasol. Meanwhile, Ribbon Girl. Getting the early throw, no slap of Manders have been her best friend on this Sky Arena. And Ribbon Girl trying to hold it down at the top end. D1, these slap of Manders, they're so unpredictable to try and block because they're fast, but they're also wide arcing. Yeah, and it's definitely like a whip kind of glove. Very difficult for people to try to jump over and air, uh, air dash as Wind well. trying to charge her punches, gets the grab and the throw on Ribbon Girl. Knocking Ribbon Girl back down to the lower level. Although that throw is going to be negated by a 1-2 counter with Ribbon Girl. Ribbon Girl trying to get those slap Manders charged up. Meanwhile, Parasol is going to be... Here comes the rush attack from Twintel. Ribbon Girl tried to jump over, but no. Twintel connects for 290 damage. And Twintel being patient, connecting on one of those D1s. Yes, and patient is definitely the name of the game. I think what we see here is that Skyward Wing is waiting for Zerk to use all of his movement options in midair and then counterattack Zerk upon landing. And Vicky, we see Twintel right now knocked down to the bottom. How can Ribbon Girl keep Twintel back in May? Ribbon Girl is doing a fantastic job at playing the patient game that we were seeing earlier from Zerk, and now Zerk has changed the game and is decided to be very aggressive, oh, the jumping man. into the air, getting hit by that rush attack, dealing immense amount of damage. The perfectly timed rush attack to counter and destroy the throw attempt from Zerk as Skyward Wing continuing to hold down Fort on the Sky Arena. Very impressive, D1. We're getting close to actually having a real match here in the grand finals of the EP 2017 Arms Invitation. 2-1 on the games. First player to get to three games will be a victorious. Zerk with the lead right now with two games, although all the momentum right now seems to be in Skyward Wing's corner. As Ribbon Girl and the Slap of Manders has been a puzzle that Twintel can't solve quite yet. Meanwhile, both fighters still just keeping at bay. Connected by Twintel, early advantage and the rush attack ready to go. Twintel gonna charge both Chillas at this point. Going back to the tried and true double ice arm combo combination that works so well. Connecting on the throw here, Vicky, and knocking Ribbon Girl back down to the lower part where Zerk had so much success earlier on. Absolutely, having her on the bottom part of the stage, but she manages to get her footing back to get the neutral. Now they both have to find their close range attacks. That is where the most pressure is gonna be held at. Quintel getting the nice one-two punch. Here comes the grab, but no, it's negated once again, but then locked in time, D1. And Quintel keeping enough distance to be able to counter and block that rush attack by Ribbon Girl. Yeah, right there, Zerk's arms were actually slightly damaged as we saw the caution signs on both of his arms. But he gets the counter. Oh, oh actually counters the rush with the grab. Great stuff by Skyward Wing. Quintel just too late misses the bus on the rush attack. However, Ribbon Girl gets the throw and knocks Quintel down. However, quintel has got plenty of health. You mentioned being patient and risk management at this point. If you're Quintel, Ribbon Girl with just a thread of life left at this point. Twintel trying to get the knockout, forces to a third and potentially decisive round. Ribbon Girl, she's dancing in the air, but no, can't avoid that grab and throw. And Zerk gonna go ahead and take that round, Vicky. And now Zerk is just one round away from the Arms Open Invitational Championship. And that was great awareness from Zerk. He was able to grab uh, his opponent only because he was jumping in the air way too much. And instead of throwing out any punches, he was able to grab right below him as he landed. Quintel Dual Chill is going to connect on the throw right there, knock Ribbon Girl back down to the lower part. Quintel trying to be very cautious, staying up top, keeping Ribbon Girl up bank. Not necessarily getting too close, leaving plenty of time to read those double slap on Manders. But yet again, here we go. Decisive thing right there. D1. Oh, but it's just a little bit of that rush attack left as Quintel able to negate most of that damage. Uh oh, and here's the rush done right here after that grab. But actually, it looks like Skyward Wing willing to wait out Zerk. And there it is, a beautiful counterattack over those grabs. With all those jumps that Ribbon Girl has, it's going to be really hard to pin her down. Rush attack gonna be blocked by Ribbon Girl, so no rush attack is connected yet in this round. Don't forget, if Zerg asks Quintel, his victorious will be our tournament champion. Meanwhile, Ribbon Girl trying to force a decisive game five in this match set here. Meanwhile, Quintel, Ribbon Girl getting pushed back. Ribbon Girl trying to put some more pressure on Quintel, gonna charge those slap commanders. Dual Chillis charge, they're missing, and both of our fighters right now can't really quite connect. Although, 
There's the connection you want right there, Vicky. The rush attack by Ribbon Girl gonna do a nice jump of damage. And the rush attack from Skyward Wing exactly doing what Zerk did to him earlier, catching his landing in the air. Zerk does love to hover in the air for quite some time to counter those punches. 23 seconds left, keep an eye on the clock. Quintel with the throw and a rush attack ready to go, D1. This could be a pivotal point of this match. If Zerk wants to get this championship, here comes another throw. Ribbon Girl down to the last couple bits of life. A rush attack ready to go for Twintel. 10 seconds away. Are you just gonna sit back, wait, and get your championship? Or will Twintel get the KO for the championship, D1? But keep your eyes on the rush. There's a lot of pressure right now on his shield. And there it is, the timeout. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Zerk with the championship and very tactful play right here. Vicky being able to stand back. And how about Zerk, one of our four open qualifiers? using Twintel, getting the championship. A hard-fought grand finals match right there. Unfortunately, that ability won't be part of one of our characters, unfortunately. But you look at what all of our characters did today, Vicky, and the fact that our open qualifiers did such a fine job of adapting to this game and changing their strategy all throughout. I honestly wouldn't have asked for an even more hype grand finals at that very moment. That was a very close toe-to-toe -to -toe match. And honestly, all the qualifiers that have been put into this tournament have really shown why they were here in the first place. Zerk is our champion. And with that, please welcome to the stage producer of ARMS, Mr. Yabuki, to present the 2017 ARMS Open Invitational Belt. So I want to thank everyone here for watching and with so, having so much passion. And everyone watching online, thanks for hanging in there. I hope you enjoyed it. And for all the people who have fought here today, I want to say that it was really great to watch. But more than anything, Zerk. You know, from start to finish, I saw, I saw no gaps in your game. It was really amazing to watch. So I think you can guess it's time to give Zerk that championship belt. Congratulations to Zerk, your champion in the 2017 Arms Open Invitational. I don't do this too often when I get these gigs, but Ed, Ed, my producer here. We saw this during Pokin Tournament Deluxe. Is it okay? Can we get an exhibition match between Mr. Yabuki and Zerk? Do you guys want to see an exhibition match between the producer? You're not tired. You're not tired, are you? Okay. Let's get it set. Okay. Dirk versus Mr. Yabuki in an exhibition match. Champion versus producer. Let's get them set in their positions. Meanwhile, we'll go ahead and put the belt up there. D1, Vicky, what do you expect to see from Zerk this time? Now he's going against some very stiff competition. Now, I know Zerk has really patient play when it comes to his twin tail, but I mean, he's coming up against the producer of arms. Things might be a little bit different. He might be a tad shook. As we saw earlier within the poking tournament, I have definitely seen that these producers are the creators for a reason, and this game has not been out at all. <laughs> so the amount of practice that you're going to be getting from the master himself, I mean, we're going to be seeing it right now. Well, I think what else is very interesting is what character will Mr. Yubuki go with? Because we see Twintel, and you wonder what character will be a good counter against Twintel because, as we saw earlier, Skyward Wing was locked into Ribbon Girl. We don't know if that was, a, that was necessarily the best counter, so it'll be interesting to see who he will go with. Meanwhile, you look at the strategy for Zerk. Really use the advantage of the level of the Sky Arena. I don't know if that advantage is going to exist, exist this time, D1. True. I don't know which stage are we going to. Are we going to even have access to the Sky Arena again? We will find out here shortly. However, I am being told that our producer, Mr. Yubuki, for his character choice, is going to go 
with Min Min. Meanwhile, Zerk rising from the grave, gonna go with Master Mummy. Interesting decision right here by Zerk as these two get set to battle it out right here in this exhibition match. We have our champion of the 2017 Arms Open Invitational, Zerk, taking on Mr. Yabuki, producer of Arms. Don't be nervous, Zerk. Don't and worry, it's just the whole world watching you. And watch how this match is starting. You already see Zerk trying to move back with Master Mummy. He wants to negate the 50-50s with the rock, paper, scissors, you know, uh, with grabs and attacks, right? With the Mega Top Punch. But this Min Min is applying pressure from afar, and Zerk is quite content just sitting there and recovering. Recovery, 10 health each time. Min Min using that Ram Ram to put some pressure on Master Mummy. Meanwhile, just keeping her distance. Mr. Yabuki, trust me, knows a thing or two about this game here, Vicky. And that is why we're actually seeing Mr. Yubu Yubuki hold on to his attack, taking advantage of the fact that whenever Min Min holds an attack, her arm becomes a dragon, dealing extra damage. Absolutely. Min Min doing some fine work right now, keeping Master Mummy at bay. That'll be really helpful for her. She hopes to get this victory over Master Mummy, controlled by Zerk. Zerk not going with Twintel, trying to sacrifice a little beauty for power in this match right here. Meanwhile, Min Min has a rush attack ready to go, looking for an opening. Yes, this is looking really scary. Also, let's not forget the Mega Watt. It, it can actually clash with the Mega Ton, so it's really scary right here for Zerk. He's already getting knocked down, so it shows that even though he doesn't usually switch, wait a second, opportunity right here. Master Mummy trying to use the rush attack, misses right there. Min Min, look at the avoidance and the dodging and the maneuverability right there, Vicky. And that is exactly what we were saying earlier. Min Min has the ability to parry in the air with all her kicks. Min Min getting knocked back by that Megaton. It's got the advantage. Ten seconds left, though. Look at the health bar for Min Min. Min Min can be patient. Give Zerk a little bit of his own time-consuming medicine at this point. Meanwhile, Master Mummy, that's not going to do it, Zerk. Can't recharge health fast enough in time. Min Min with the victory, D1. I think he should have went to Intel. No disrespect. <laughs> Meanwhile, this will be a three out of five games exhibition. So Zerk... You're gonna have to bring your A game. You can't let him win. He's not gonna give you a free copy if you let him win. Meanwhile, Mr. Yabuki taking advantage of Zerk and the slower Master Mummy. Mr. Yabuki throwing that Ram Ram along with the Mega Watch. And that one-two combination right there, D1, able to stun and burn Master Mummy. Yeah, and right now, look at Master Mummy's shield. It's actually getting quite damaged. It goes from blue to green to yellow and then red. And after that, it breaks. And after the arms break, you're, you're after, after your shield breaks, actually, you're unable to use your arms, and that can be very crucial, especially to a character like Nimin. Notice how Mr. Yubuki is actually not trying to throw as many grabs as we were seeing previously. Mr. Yubuki controlling Min Min, throwing some curving punches with a beautiful parabolic arm, trying to get some damage on Master Mummy. Master Mummy trying to jump up on those trampolines right there. Master Mummy, if it can connect with a couple throws, can do some major damage here, D1. Yeah, right now, Mr. Yubuki definitely looking like the living personification of movement, but that rush attack doing so much damage. That rush attack doing 405 on Min Min. Mr. Yubuki finding himself in a little bit of a corner. Meanwhile, Zerk starting to get a hang of Master Mummy. Much different play style than with Twin Tail. How the, however, Min Min has a rush attack ready to go here, D1. And you see Zerk is actually jumping a lot, giving a, open, a free opportunity for Min Min to get the rush. But there's the grab, and that's a free charge for the Dragon. And oh! We talked about the jungle on the trampoline. We talked about that D1. Unbelievable. Painting an orchestra in the corner with Mr. Master Mummy. The fact that he got a grab and then rushed off of the grab because of the trampoline on that stage. Oh my gosh, Mr. Yabuki. We were just talking about how you could extend your combos off of the stages and that spring allowing you to do just that. Mr. Yabuki and Min Min, the unbelievable throw. It bounces Master Mummy off the edge. Therefore, Master Mummy doesn't get that brief and vulnerability when you fall. Still just a sitting mummy bouncing up in the air and like a punching bag. Min Min and Mr. Yabuki go to town for the victory here, D1. Yeah, I think it's about time we went to France uh, to find Twintel because Master Mummy, I think he got put right back into the uh, coffin. As we mentioned, this exhibition match is going to be adjusted to a best two out of three as far as the games go. So Mr. Yubuki taking the first game. If Mr. Yubuki takes the next game, we'll get the victory over our 2017 Arms Open Invitational Champion that is Zerk. Meanwhile, Zerk, do you think Zerk goes back to Master Mummy or do you think he goes back with what was tried and true and brought him the victory here, Vicky, and that was Twintel? If he made it to this position with Twintel, I definitely do believe he should stick to Twintel. 
no more au revoir here. So we are gonna strap on the gloves and <laughs> in Twintel's favor, wrap them around her hair and bring it on. Okay. Meanwhile, Twintel going with the Thunderbird and the Chillip. Meanwhile, Springman going with a little vanilla ice cream here and double toast as we get set. Springman controlled by Mr. Yabuki, producer, four arms. Meanwhile, Zerk, our champion, and this arms open invitational going with Twintel, getting the shock on Springman early in this one, and Twintel dodging and weaving, trying to use that Thunderbird to get a couple faster strikes in their D1. And we talk about Mr. Yabuki's movement. We've talked about mobility, Mr. Yubuki finally tuned on that, dancing around trying to avoid those punches. Already a rush attack ready for Mr. Yubuki, but Twintel has one as well too. Both fighters keeping a lot of distance in this stage in particular, Vicky, because you know, if you get knocked okay. on that trampoline, you're wide open. Meanwhile, oh Twintel my goodness. slowing down time to take on Springman right there. You cannot touch this guy. Mr. Yabuki is just untouchable. And using that Thunderbird, if he manages to connect it right there, as you notice, the arms, he can't use them. And Twintel, with full rush, he actually can just obliterate Springman. Twintel getting some pressure on Springman. Meanwhile, Springman jumping up on the trampoline. Meanwhile, a lot of distance between these two fighters here, Vicky. Absolutely, and as we're seeing right now, Mr. Yabuki is just avoiding all these punches, was able to slow down time to avoid that rush attack we saw earlier, and almost perfect health. He just continues to box uh, Zerk out constantly. We should say Zerk as Springman, Mr. Yabuki as Twintel, trying to give Zerk, as we mentioned, a taste of that own medicine and what Twintel can do. And Twintel, as we just putting Springman on the rails right here. Eight seconds left, oh, trying to connect, yeah. but here comes a rush attack from Springman. Meanwhile, Quintel, just nothing, skating around there, D1. The Springman is getting jammed! Unbelievable. Mr. Yabuki using Twintel, slowing down time. Springman can't lay a glove. I hope you wore extra deodorant, sir, because you were sweating unlike anything I've seen yet so far. Meanwhile, let's get to our second round in this game so far. If Mr. Yubuki controlling Twintel gets this victory, will be our champion in this exhibition round. Zerk, meanwhile, with those double toasters and Springman, trying to get some pressure on Twintel, but no, gonna get bounced off off the back right there, Vicky. We're just seeing all these arms clash at the very moment. Twintel still has not taken any damage as of right now, but continuously cornering this Springman. Springman double charge toasters, however, Twintel's got a full rush gauge ready to go. That rush attack ready to call at a moment's notice. D1, what are we seeing? One thing I see from Zerk, he's actually using the shockwave as he's moving to repel the attacks from Twintel. This is actually helping him keep up with Mr. Yabuki. Meanwhile, Twintel with a slight health, slight health advantage. 57 seconds left. Twintel gonna bounce off the trampoline. Counter with the shot and the throw here, D1. Oh my gosh, if he was able to actually throw him on the trampoline, that would have been a rush. Unbelievable performance right here by Mr. Yabuki and Twintel. Meanwhile, the throw by Springman. Oh! We need a throw back! Oh, Same God. exact thing he got hit with! Oh, Madison, the juggle trampoline off to the throw into the rush attack. Beautiful by Springman, however, there's still plenty of match to go. Here comes another throw. Let's see if Springman can close this one out. Zerk trying to force a third round in this game. Meanwhile, Twintel dodging, weaving, trying to connect with that Thunderbird on the left. 23 seconds left, Twintel trying to get a hit here on Springman. Meanwhile, Springman doing a finer job just avoiding these hits. Oh, Twintel connects with the Thunderbird. Twintel has a rush attack ready to go. Just being patient, waiting for that opportunity off the trampoline. Oh, here it comes. Oh, connect. Catches him in the ear. Gonna knock Springman back. Five seconds left. Both fighters at almost equal health. Next punch could be victorious. Oh, Mr. Yabuki punches through the throw. Mr. Yabuki. Oh, my goodness. Getting the victory over Zerk in D1. How about Mr. Yabuki's ability to stay patient to close that one out? His, it, just his maneuverability around the stage, it is out of control. Every time Zerk thinks he's able to get a grab, you just see him dash out of the way. Oh, that mobility, yo. Mr. Yobuki heard us talk about Zerk's Twintel, but forget the Twintel. Let's talk about Mr. Yobuki's Twintel. Mr. Yobuki's Twintel is quite crisp. Why don't we get both of our fighters back to the middle of the stage? Zerk, Mr. Yobuki, and one more time, let's give that 2017 Arms Open Invitational belt to Zerk. Give it up one more time for both of our competitors right here. Unbelievable performances. And Mr. Yubuki, thank you very much. And thank you for joining us for all of our competitions over the last couple days. Enjoy the rest of the show.